Greetings, friend, and welcome to the podcast show, Touching People for Heaven, with your host, Preacher John. God bless you, my dear friend. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there will be something here on this show, in this episode, that you're able to use in your life, and in the life of your family, and in the lives of your friends, and in the lives of people you haven't met yet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, are we ready? Let's get started. This is episode number 59, number 59, and is titled, Let Us Reason Together. The title is found in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, and I'll read it to you from the King James Version. It's, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for being our offering and our sacrifice for our sins. We receive you, Lord Jesus, and confess you as our Savior. Thank you for giving us the promise of the Father that we may reason and come together in the spirit of unity and love to glorify and honor our Father which art in heaven. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for giving us the power to testify of the mighty and wonderful works of God. And thank you, Holy Ghost, for giving us the ability to persuade others of their need for salvation. We are filled with thanksgiving for all that you are providing to the body of Christ. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor forever. We love you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, well, we are off and running with this Sunday prayer letter. As you know, this is Preacher John. I'm recording this show here in Boulder, Colorado. I'm a missionary. I'm a street preacher, building a new church, founding pastor, I guess you could say, to Gospel Evangelist Church. Our scripture foundation for our church is Mark 16, 15 through 20. I was called to the state of Colorado to build God a church and to the city of Boulder. That's basically what God says. I want you to build a church, build me a church in the state of Colorado, in the city of Boulder, and I want you to name it Gospel Evangelist Church, and your scripture foundations are Mark 16, 15 through 20. Of course, he went on and gave me about two, three, almost four pages of notes on the why this church, what's it doing, where's it going. Uh... I had that sheet of those sheets of paper, those three or four sheets of paper for years and years and years. And for the life of me, I don't know whatever happened to them. They got lost somewhere in the city of Boulder. <laughs> so at one of the coffee shops, I guess I must have lost it uh, or forgot it behind and it got tossed in the trash or whatever happened. But the Lord wrote that vision on my spirit, in my spirit, and in my mind, and in my heart, on my heart, I guess you'd say, and uh, He is unfolding the calling and the vision of Gospel Evangelist Church right before my eyes. I'm excited about that. And this Sunday prayer letter is one of the tools that God is using to build Gospel Evangelist Church. The idea behind this Sunday letter is to Keep us all together as one accord, sort of like in Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2, where they were all in one accord. And uh, this letter attempts to do just that, keep us in one accord. We use the letter throughout the week, beginning Sunday morning, through our preaching on Sunday, then we preach with it all week long. On Wednesday in our house church, we use it as a... Uh, guiding light as a framework to uh, preach from, to minister from, and everyone gets the letter, and uh, it's uh, it's just been good. For, for example, last week, all week, I had a chance to minister of the previous letter that we had, so I'd encourage you to uh, keep up with the letters. They're really thought-provoking. They really do stir your spirit, and I have a little bit of a caveat on this letter today. Uh, this letter today that I'm going to go through, uh, I use the letter from my script here on the show, but the letter is somewhat, um, how could I say, not simple. It appears to be somewhat complex 
or maybe you could use the word uh, very meaty. <laughs> uh, I've read through it several times, and uh, it makes me stop in my tracks and think, and I think about the Word of God. That's what the letter does for me personally as I went through it and was uh, making sure you know all my I's were dotted, my T's were crossed, I guess you'd say. But that's what it produced in me. What it produces in you and may be completely different, but what it produced in me was it made me stop and think about what God was trying to say in reference to the scriptures that I'll read in the letter. But it made me think about the Word of God and my prayer life with God. So, so let's uh, let's jump right into our letter. Let me scroll up through here. I do read the the script uh, as uh, the letter as a script, and another sidebar, as you most likely know, is I don't edit these shows. What comes out of me, out of my mouth, stays on the show. I do that for a couple different reasons. One. I just don't know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. If he uses a uh, an o, oh, or a, the way I say something, maybe he'll use that to trigger someone else to do something for God. Uh, and the other idea is that I don't know what the Holy Ghost would use. I mean, he could use all of me as a tool. And all too often when people sound polished and pristine and perfect and pure, and just, they're just like, perfect human being, I guess you'd say, uh, I don't use that word anymore, but a perfect man, male or female, uh, someone else would say, you know, I just can't do that. I mean, he's just, or she's just too good. And I, I just don't like that. I'd rather be looked at as a, uh, a bumbling idiot <laughs> or a fool or someone who really doesn't know what they're doing. I said, man, I, if John can do that, I can surely do something a lot better than that. And uh, that gets them going into the ministry. In other words, I look to me as a weak vessel, W-E-A-K, a weak vessel that God can use, and God uses the weak of this world to uh, confound the strong, I guess. There's, there's a lot of verses on that. Okie doke. So let's uh, jump right in. After we just prayed, we'll stop. Uh, we'll just scroll down through the letter here. and says, when we pray, let us think on the love of God and how he gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This, my friend, is our greatest joy and pleasure here on earth. Without the joy of the Lord, we would suffer greatly and beyond description. Let us all enter into the joy of the Lord and abide there forever. Amen. So why is it? That when we pray or when we search the scriptures, our mind wants to go do something else. I realize that for many believers, this is their life. But my question is, why? Why? I know the reason. Do you know the reason? If you too know why, then your life is probably filled with amazing joy. If you may not know why, then possibly you are divided between the love of this world and the love of the Father, or in other words, not sure of your salvation. Of course, how would I know where you are? I don't. You do. <laughs> and this is one of the many reasons why this Sunday prayer letter is being written. Interesting, huh? In our previous Sunday prayer letter titled, Open You the Windows of Heaven, we discuss the actions we do that could be catalysts to open a window, both physically and spiritually, either for blessing and or for curses. Hopefully this last week you gave some time to read the letter and or listen to the audio of the letter or quite possibly viewed one of my many videos on the subject from this week. In this new Sunday prayer letter titled, Let Us Reason Together, we will hopefully answer many of the questions that came up last week from that letter. The messages and sermons that came from this letter were quite different and peculiar to the normal messages. But to me, I find them all very fascinating and, and uh, thought-provoking. 
Just a note here again, I'm still attempting to send out my emails, uh, our email. Uh, let me rephrase that. I'm still attempting to send out by our email service the current week's letter uh, rather than the previous letters that were written. Uh, those letters will be shortly going into a book volume, one volume per year. Uh, this will be for 2019 2020 than this year here of 2021. It may take much longer than anticipated to get this project completed, but I know it will uh, soon enough. Praise the Lord. So I just want to let people know on that because I was sending out all the letters one at a time and having people go to my ministry website to see today's or the current Sunday prayer letter. But as you just heard, I'm attempting to uh, get the current letter out to every single person. If you're not a part of our email service, uh, you can surely uh, do so. There's no requirement. There's no money. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. You can unsubscribe at any time. It, uh, it's just something that uh, you can take a look at, and you can use it in your own ministry or whatever the case may be. You can go to uh, the one-page website I use to have people sign up for the prayer letter. That address is preacherjohn.ck.page, preacherjohn.ck.page, preacherjohn.ck.page. That's the one-page website that allows people to see who I am and allow them to put their first name and best email to receive the prayer letter. So let's get back into our letter again. Our key text scripture for today's letter is found in Isaiah, and this is a subject that I have used often in the ministry. I just always found it to be a thought-provoking means of getting God closer to us or us closer to God. In a personal sense. Hopefully it will today, however, I think that the Holy Ghost will be taking us into a bit of a different direction, more in reference to giving. So let's see what happens. Isaiah 118, King James Version, I'll read it again. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your skin though their sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The first thing is, let's define the word reason, since that is the operative word in our seed title. Reason, R-E-A-S-O-N, reason, I see that Acts 18.4 has the closest current definition that relates to all of us, I think. <laughs> And I'll read it to you. It's Acts 18, 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Do you see that reason is likened to persuade? And this word is found 25 times in the New and 9 in the Old. So the word persuade, it's P-E-R-S-U-A-D-E, persuade is to embrace and or confess, as per the Scriptures, 1 Kings 22, verses 20, 21 and 22. I'm not going to read those King, 1 Kings 22 here. You can, uh, if you'd like, look them up for yourself. <laughs> and of course, the word confess comes quickly to mind as a believer in the book of Romans. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, that we've placed this particular scripture here, let's take a look at the verse above this one and the one just below it. In other words, verses 8 and 10. So Romans 10, 8 says, says this, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. So, do you see that God is talking about word? How this speaking of the word of faith can produce what it was sent out to do? It's, it seems complicated, and they've just kind of 
take a little note here off to the side. Word of faith is something that is when you speak the word of God, faith increases in your spirit. When you stop speaking the word of God, your faith decreases in your spirit. I know that seems kind of odd, but that basically that's how it works. Because when you see a lot of people that are really into the Word and really into prayer, their faith seems like mountain-moving faith. Then other times, when you've known of someone that was really powerful in the Lord, I, I guess you could say, and now they seem like, wow, they're in sin and they're doing this and they're doing that. Wow, what happened to them? If you take a real close look at their life, you'll see that they stopped confessing the Word of God. They stopped persuading their own spirit that the Word of God is true. And that when they aren't speaking the Word of faith, their faith is diminishing. So that's a little sidebar just to be alert there. <laughs> you know, that's kind of like why I like doing these shows, because I get to add a few bits and pieces in that are not in the letter. So that's why I think listening to the show is uh, beneficial. I-, I listen to it several times when I'm on the bus and uh, normally when I'm not walking, but when I ride the bus, because I'm on the bus two or three times a week. And so I enjoy listening to the show while I'm on the bus. So let's go persuade. We already did that. And of course, the word confess quickly comes to mind as. OK, so we did that. So sorry, I'm thinking out loud here on the show. Uh, oh, let's drop down, drop down to Romans 10, 8. This is one of the reasons why I don't like going off off the script. <laughs> Just a little hint for those people who are wishing they could do a podcast. I write this whole script out and I need to stick with it. So let's just kind of see if we can stick to the words on the script. <laughs> Romans 10, 8 in the King James. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And here, my friend, is where we see that confusion with our mouth takes faith. Confession, not confusion. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) And here we see that confession with our mouth takes faith. (laughs) There you go, buddy. (laughs) And also builds our faith, even to the point that we can confess and believe what we say by faith. That when we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. So, therefore, when the Lord says in Isaiah 1.18, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. We see and understand that all the counsel of God is of importance to us and can produce fruit in our life. Can you all see and understand that when someone takes bits and pieces out of all the counsel of God and creates a doctrine without supporting scriptures from God's counsel, that cults can be built. However, not readily seen, possibly too late to leave it. Beware, my dear friend, the end is near, and thus there will be many who say, I am Jesus, or I am the Christ, or I am the one. Be vigilant in the pure word of God. Be mindful of your prayer life in God. Be awake and ready in God. One more Supporting scripture here is Hebrews eleven thirteen. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now, let's get to some more of what we are talking about in reference to reasoning and of 
persuading. A. Isaiah 118, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Number 1. Isaiah 119, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Here, we are able to clearly see the two actions that God is talking about, which is willing and obedient. We get to choose between these two words, and we get to do both at the same time. Plus, we can choose not to do either one. God gives us our will to make choices because God is a loving Father and wants to create in us something beautiful. We do have a choice. <clears throat> and we too may give our choice to God and to have Him lead us to the best fruit possible. Now, where is that in the Bible? <laughs> That's Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father. We are the clay, and Thou art potter, and we all are the work of Thy hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's clearly clarify the power of God here. Because to many people think they all have the power to do whatever it is that they want to do. And that God will let them do whatever they want. Beware. Don't be deceived, my friend. Number two is Isaiah 120. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord have spoken. Here we see two more words of actions that can be taken that God is bringing to our attention. Refuse and rebel. Are these two word actions that produce life and life abundantly? Let me say that again. Are these two words actions that produce life and life abundantly? Remember what the two words were? Refuse, rebel. Right? Does refuse and rebel towards God, does that produce life and then abundance? <laughs> I hope you answered the correct answer. <laughs> well, from the point of view from the street, while under the banner, I would say some think it doesn't matter how they act or how they think or how they look because foolishness abounds. Foolishness abounds, my friend. Let's go back a few books to the summary of the Word of God in the Old Covenant. B. Deuteronomy 11.26 Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Blessing and curse are the two words. Number one, Deuteronomy 11.27 <clears throat> A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. Number two, Deuteronomy 11.28 and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> without, um, without going into more details here, because I think you get the idea of making the proper decision or choice. This letter is referring referencing not only giving, but also that we have within us the power to choose heaven or hell, blessings or curses. We have been full and fully given this power. These decisions that we make are our best made when we all have the counsel of God in us and have spent the proper amount of time before the Lord Jesus in prayer and even fasting. These are things that I talk a lot about. <clears throat> Why? Well, to me, I see the Word of God has power to give us wisdom and understanding, and that prayer gives also the wisdom and understanding plus knowledge of God to make correct and fruitful decisions that glorify our Heavenly Father. 
Lastly, I have the summary of what we all should see when it comes to giving. It's in Revelation 22, 13. And I'll read it again from the King James. Uh, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So number one would be Revelations 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The word here is blessed. So blessed when we do the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So number two would be Revelations, Revelation 22, 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So the word here would be cursed when we make lies and live a life of evil, which is of the devil, Satan. <clears throat> I'm going to put uh, this last scripture here for the people I hear from on the street that say to me that there are no churches in the New Testament or, you know, something like that. And that's in Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Let's pray again. Lord Jesus, you are everything to us. Without you as our Savior, the Word, then what we have to look forward to is nothing. You, Lord Jesus, are our inheritance. There is nothing in this earth that we want or need. We love you and nothing else. Holy Ghost, please help all those who have trouble declaring their love for God. Help us all, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And my Sunday prayer letter is signed respectfully in Jesus with my initials, J.C. Below my initials, I have three scriptures, Matthew 16, 18. And I said, I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Acts 2.47 Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. 1 Corinthians 14.33 for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Amen and amen. Well, there you go, folks. This is my Sunday prayer letter. It's written Saturday, May 1st, 2021, 3.45 p.m. from Boulder, Colorado. It's written by none other than preacher John Shuck, <laughs> a street preacher, church builder, founding pastor and missionary. God bless you, my friend. Have a great day and a great evening. God bless. Bye-bye.